Hello everyone and you are welcome back to Learn with SOS. My name is Steve Sebastian Osu, final year KNUS School of Business. And today I'm honored to walk you through logic and critical thinking. Lesson one, that is LCT 162. But before we get started, I want you to understand that logic and critical thinking is not difficult. Yes, you heard me right. Logic and critical thinking is not rocket science. It's about time you understood the concept. And uh, I vehemently believe that at the end of this tutorial, you will really appreciate the role critical thinking plays in all our lives. Now, these are the objectives that we want to achieve at the end of this tutorial. You know what critical thinking is all about. You know the pillars of critical thinking. And you also appreciate the standards of critical thinking. And finally, you look at the benefits of critical thinking. Now, let's begin with this, the first question. What is critical thinking? I remember the first day in class, in critical thinking class, Dr. Enya asked the same question. One of our colleagues raised the hand and confidently lied to all of us that critical thinking is the art of thinking critically. If we are thinking that way, my friend, it's a sin. Yeah. Now, critical thinking is the systematic evaluation of beliefs or statements by rational standards. You see, we all believe in something. And there is this assumption that a belief is worth having, provided it is most likely true. We also assume that a belief is most likely if there are good reasons to accept it. So in some books, they define critical thinking as thinking about your thinking. So in simple terms, critical thinking means that what you believe in, the things you believe in, what are the reasons why you believe in those things? You believe that when you whistle at night, your mother will die. What are the reasons why you believe what you believe is right? That is why critical thinking is a systematic evaluation of beliefs or statements by not just any standards so or rational standards. Now, there is a key word we have to explain here. It is systematic because it involves distinct procedures and methods, not just gut feelings or things we feel so you realize that in critical thinking we we evaluate existing beliefs and we formulate new ones usually the moment we evaluate existing beliefs we realize that there is a problem with the existing ones so we either modify or formulate the new ones and and we and we do this based on how well they are supported by reasons so in critical thinking if a belief is not really supported by reasons then it's not a good belief now why should we think critically you see who we are is largely determined by our actions and choices and our actions and choices are in turn determined by our thoughts and beliefs. So if we don't choose our beliefs carefully, then we are giving up control. We are business students of KNUST because we chose to be here. And we have reasons why we were here. So you see, were you to choose any other school, would have been there by now there are so many things we do there are so many customs that we are stuck to it has made us who we are because we chose to believe in those things but that means if we choose something wrongly 
if you don't evaluate a, a belief and we get stuck to it and it's wrong look at the kind of time you've wasted so please we should always try to think critically because who we are today the things we are doing are because of the choices and the decisions we made some years ago now what is critical thinking all about i call it the pillars of critical thinking now to think critically means to think outside the box think beyond your comfort zone it's all about challenging our assumptions what you believe in are there other evidences available as well should i scrutinize what i believe in so first thing critical thinking means to think outside the box secondly ask hard questions ask intelligent questions and finally reject biases stereotypes and unwarranted assumptions if you do these things then we can say you are thinking critically or you are a critical thinker so to think critically you need to be able to think listen and read slowly and attentively and it will help you to understand a lot of definitions and concepts now we all have things we believe in yes and in our part of the world it is not easy to revise our opinions or beliefs some of us are used to saying that i've been doing this from infancy how can i change it so it becomes a real conundrum when we are tempted to revise our opinions and beliefs now the question is how can we do this in an intelligent and responsible way the answer lies with critical thinking now to appreciate the value of critical thinking let us try to strike the distinction between two kinds of behavior in our life under critical thinking our behaviors are dichotomized or categorized into two we have the descriptive and normative the descriptive enterprise talks about how we actually think or behave because people describe us based on the things we actually do so the enterprise that talks about how people actually think or behave is what descriptive then the normative from the word normal to normalize something means what we ought to think or behave so the normative enterprise is about what we ought to do so we realize that what we actually think or behave is not the same as what we ought to do or ought to think for example if we're a liar that is the descriptive enterprise but is that what you ought to do no you ought to tell the truth that is normative so you realize that critical thinking is a normative enterprise because critical thinking is about the proper behavior so you realize that some of us should stop going to church and let's form a church called church of critical thinking i'll be the pastor and you all be my church members so critical thinking is a normative enterprise because it specifies the principles of correct thinking the rationally proper ways in which we can gauge whether a belief is true reasonable rational and worthy of preserving if we apply critical thinking very well we realize that there are so many beliefs that we are stuck to that we don't even know and understand why we are still i mean observing those things now from the definition we said that critical thinking 
are based on rational standards. So we use rational standards to evaluate our beliefs. That means that critical thinking is a science and an art. It is multidisciplinary because it draws inferences and references from philosophy and ethics, etc. Now, these are the standards of critical thinking. There are plenty of them, but these are among the most important. We have clarity, precision, accuracy, relevance, consistency, logical correctness, completeness, and fairness. Now, let's briefly um, go through these critical thinking standards. Now, let's start with clarity. You see, before we can effectively evaluate a person's belief, we need to understand clearly what a person is saying. Though it's, it's, it's difficult sometimes for people to often express themselves clearly. Because sometimes they don't have the skill to do that. But critical thinkers try to strive for clarity of language and also seek maximum clarity of thought. So in doing so, we can ask these questions. Could you elaborate further on that point? Could you express that point in another way? Could you give me an illustration? Could you give me an example? All these questions point to clarity. Let's look at precision. Critical thinkers have an unflinching desire to precision. And, and to, to be precise, you need to train your observation very well. You need to have a wonderful observation, precise logical inference. Inference means making a conclusion from, I mean, a premise. And ability to, to, to decipher clues and discover the solution to a mystery. So, in being precise, you can ask yourself, can you be more specific? Could you give me more details? What exactly is the problem? We ask all these questions to be precise. Then you move to accuracy. In critical thinking, we, we don't just want the truth though. You want, you want to know the depth of the information. How accurate is the information? So, under accuracy, we can ask ourselves, is that thing really true? This belief or this idea I have, how can I check that? How can, I, how can I even find out if what I believe is true? That means you want accuracy. Then we talk about relevance. Relevance here is about staying focused to the idea or information. So under relevance, we can ask ourselves, how is this thing connected to the question? How does this idea bear on the issue in our discussion? Then we move to consistency. Consistency. Now, under consistency, we have two kinds of consistency. We have the logical consistency, so logical inconsistency, and uh, practical inconsistency. Radical thinkers want to be consistent. We don't want to beat about the bush. So, with logical inconsistency, that is whereby we intentionally believe in something that is not true yeah that is logical inconsistency we intentionally believe or say something that we know can never be true or are not true then the practical inconsistency is whereby we say one thing and that's opposite so you see we can fall within one of them then we look at logical correctness this is the ability to think logically and to reason correctly. So, for example, under logical correctness, we can ask ourselves, does this thing really make sense? Does that follow from what you said? How does that follow? We want to check if there is what logic. We all have the power to reason. Then we look at completeness. And a completeness, we look at um, how deep 
the information is so we we try to avoid superficial and shallow thinking so under completeness too we can ask ourselves is there another way to look at this question or this belief or this idea what would this look like from a, a conservative standpoint or what would this look like from the point of view of someone else or from a different perspective so under completeness we try to look at a problem from different angles then we talk about fairness fairness you want to be open-minded impartial and free of distorting biases and preconceptions these are the standards the most important ones on which critical thinking are measured now what are some of the benefits of critical thinking we have academic performance it helps us to uh, it helps us to understand the arguments and beliefs of others and to defend your own beliefs so if you think critically you can evaluate arguments and beliefs and you can also defend develop your own well-supported argument there are so many things we know we believe in whether from the religious point of view from the cultural point of view that when we are asked you don't even know we can't even defend our beliefs so if you think critically you will find reason to support what you believe in that's for academic performance that was sometimes we are called to defend our work because they want to know if indeed we didn't plagiarize or we didn't copy from somewhere at the workplace too it can help you to be more analytical to change you see critical thinking is about evaluating something to know if it is right or wrong and if it is wrong you make amendment so it encourages open-mindedness to change and and it helps to get a deeper understanding of our own and what other decision then the last one critical thinking helps in our daily life it helps us to avoid making in quote foolish life decisions it promotes an informed and concerned citizenry capable of making good decisions on important social political and what economic issues so there are so many decisions we took some time ago that had we think critically we wouldn't have made those decisions so you realize that critical thinking is a way of life everyone should be involved in critical thinking on that note that is where we end our tutorial on lesson one it's been wonderful having you here but before i say goodbye don't forget to like subscribe and comment for more tutorials and mcqs on logic and critical thinking so then great minds let's change the world see you when i see you bye bye